I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another review. This is a Patreon review for Ben. Thank you so much to everyone who has joined me on my Patreon. If everyone, anyone wants to do that, the link is down below. It's a monthly thing. You can request a review or commentary based on the tiers. Or if you a one-time thing, you can always request via PayPal. The link to my PayPal is down below either way. Patreon, PayPal. If not, no worries. The review for today that Ben wanted was Saving Private Ryan. And I caught myself because I was ready to say Saving Ryan's Privates. But that's a different movie. <laughs> but Saving Private Ryan is the 1998 World War II film directed by Steven Spielberg. With a great cast. I mean, I will say that. You got Tom Hanks. You got Matt Damon. You got Edward Burns. Vin Diesel. Tom Sizemore, Giovanni Ribisi, you have Barry Pepper. Watch it again, I was surprised by some of the people in small roles, like Paul Giamatti, Brian Cranston has a small role in this, Nathan Fillion, because at one point they go to a place, they think they found Ryan, but it's a fake Ryan. He's got the same name as that the, the, the guy. And that fake Ryan is Nathan Fillion. I'm like, holy shit. Is that, is that who I think it is? It is who I think it is. Wow. So that was interesting to, to view. And find out and discover. Because <laughs> I have seen this film. I'll be honest, the last time I saw this film was probably when it came out. Because I think I've said this before. And of course, like anything with time your view on movies can change there are movies that can age better like wine and movies that can age like garbage where they rot and they get stinkier and stinkier They're like this is an age well but I, i've always said that i do think it's a good film but it's not a film I, I cared a ton about, but this isn't a rant because I do think sincerely it is a good film. It's just, it's not a film I rewatch much. When I think of war films, I would go more towards Full Metal Jacket, Casualties of War, Hammerder Hill, films of that nature. Maybe because the, the Vietnam era interests me more when it comes to war films. Or even films like The Her Locker, which I enjoyed. I always forget about Black Hawk Down, but I remember not minding that film. I haven't seen it in forever. But World War II movies, I never really got into them. Just... I mean, yeah, fighting Nazis if you're, you're Indiana Jones or something, sure. But I don't know. I just, I don't know what it is. It's not that I thought they were bad movies. It's just, I guess, different tastes. Although, really enough, I do like The Thin Red Line. I remember liking The Thin Red Line actually more than this. But, I mean, the film does a lot of stuff right. Granted, I don't know if you need the very, very beginning and the very ending of the film 
where an older person comes by with his family then at the end you know to the memorial to the graves and at the end you find out who that is which they kind of try to trick you near the beginning which I'll get to part of me wonders if you needed that very beginning ending if you could just boom start right at the allied invasion of Normandy and this is the part everyone talks about because it is the best part of the movie and that's kind of the weird thing is that the best part of the film is the very beginning of the film so I don't know if part of me is like it kind of shot its load too early and the fact that it's a great way to open your film other than the first five minutes with the and the the old guy and his family you know because it's it's a well done even though it's a little bit of the shaky it's not as bad as it would get later on in movies but it's brutal it's gory it's well handled people arrive and people are just shot to shit boom 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 bullet still looks pretty good after god over over 20 years over 20 years old this is still looks pretty damn good and brutal i mean tom haynes sees a guy pick up his own arm and the other stuff has been blown off the effects look pretty damn good for 1998 Tom Hanks is pulling a body. There's an explosion. He's pulling the body. Realizes half the guy's body's been blown off. Or he's trying to talk to this guy who's a radio. And like Tom Hanks keeps grabbing the guy. And you see the guy's face. Then the next time he grabs it, there's like a fucking hole where the guy's face used to be. And even I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> this is a really intense sequence. And I like the cast. Uh, Giovanna Rabisi is the medic. Uh, Vin Diesel's in there for a bit. Tom Sizemore, good buddies with Tom Hanks' character. Barry Pepper's like the sniper. This big, intense battle, and then when it's over, this is what I'm saying where it seemed like they were trying to trick the audience. Because the camera pans into Tom Hanks' eyes, just like they were panning into the old guy's eyes at the very beginning of the film. So I'm guessing Steven Spielberg did that on purpose to trick the audience going, oh, well, the old guy must be Tom Hanks growing up. No, it's not that. Spoiler alert, it's Matt Damon. Who is Ryan? But I'm like, okay, Spielberg, you were trying to trick people. It's kind of not fair, but okay. Brian Cranston, he has a small role as one of the guys upper levels who finds out that of this family, there were four brothers, three of them have died. And the moms don't get all three letters. So we need to get the fourth brother out of there. I don't know if this is a common thing. Uh, people who are in the military, you can let me know if this is a common thing that if you have multiple brothers or, or sisters or whatever, if the rest are dead, you can just go home. So is this a common thing? I know it sounds shallow. Maybe I just think the military, they're not going to give a fuck about that. They want to give a fuck about winning the war and less about this. But I, I could be wrong on that. I'm that, that's a sincere question. I think one of the things that kind of bothered me ever since I first saw this was, but at least in this movie, they do mention this quite a few times. Even Edward Burns is going, isn't the math on here kind of strange? I mean, we got mothers too. And why are we risking eight people to save one guy? So at least the movie admits that. And even at the end when you've probably seen the film, Tom Hanks dies and tells Ryan, earn this. And when he's older, he's like, did I earn this? So at least the movie addresses it. But what I was saying is that I kind of agree with that. You, you know, eight people are dying. Well, not all eight, but most of them are dying for just one guy. 
is that really worth it? And part of me is like, I don't know if it is. But maybe that's the whole point of the movie, hence the title. But I don't know. It's kind of like Vertical Limit, that film with Chris O'Donnell, where all these people die to rescue you, like one person, or well, it becomes one person because one becomes a bad guy. Anyway, that's another movie. So I know that's stupid and selfish, but it's like, I don't know, it's just one of those things that just bothers me in my head. I can't help it. I can't help it. I think because also Ryan, Matt Damon doesn't do a bad job. It's just, I don't give a fuck about Ryan. And I, I don't really care because his character really isn't much of anything other than by the third act they find him and he's like no I need to stay here with my team to protect this bridge and then does so and most of the people I did care about died <laughs> and the people I wanted to die didn't die which I'll get to that in a minute but it's well filmed the, the cast do their jobs well I really liked Barry Pepper like that's a guy the more I see a Barry Pepper the more I like him I mean he wasn't good in Battlefield Earth but who can be with that piece of shit but the more I see Barry Pepper the more I like him and he was one of my favorite parts of this movie his sniper character he does some pretty badass things and I, I liked him Vin Diesel I like Vin Diesel he stars in a lot of shitty movies lately like Bloodshot which I reviewed on here what two three weeks ago yeah about three weeks ago or something maybe a month ago but the reviews on the channel that was a lame film but I like Vin Diesel to have seen an early role Tom Sizemore love him in The Relic which I reviewed long ago like Tom Hanks all those people I mentioned fucking die I'm like fuck that no the, the fucking Jeremy Davies who is this young twerp who he's only there because he can translate to German and, you know understand what they're saying and this guy I hated this fucking character this is one of the things I hated about this movie I hated that fucking character because he was just a twat in the beginning and then by the end he was just a chicken shit fuck face jerk off I know that's the point because he's the coward and then he's going to get his courage. No, he died too fucking late. Too bad, so sad. You, Mr. Buttfuck, should have died in the movie. Because there's literally a scene where a, a guy's having a, a fight, like a knife fight. Jeremy Davis tried to save this guy. <laughs> Down the stairs. <laughs> and then here's his cohort you know soldier fellow soldier slowly get stabbed as they're having this fight and then even the Germans like fuck this guy and walks past and doesn't do anything just that's how much of a yellow chicken shit this guy is then he's right in front of these bad guys he could shoot them take them no, he doesn't do anything. So this one guy shoots Tom Hanks. So that's two people we got killed. And this motherfucker lived. And I'm like, fuck that shit. That guy should have fucking died. Throat slit, make a fucking necktie. While Nickelback is playing. Fuck this guy. Fuck this character. Not the actors, not his fault. It's the character that was written for him. You didn't even need this character in the movie, to be perfectly honest. Or maybe he's there to get two fucking people killed. Oh, but he's a coward. But he's a... he he. No, I, I get what they're doing. He's a guy who scared... Earlier in the film, they have this German soldier... He's telling Tom Haynes we should let him go. Tom Haynes does let him go. Oh, look at the irony. The guy that they let go earlier, he joined another platoon, and he's the one that killed 
Tom Haynes. So the irony is, look at it. They let the German soldier go, and he's the one, because Jeremy told, Jeremy spoke in class today, and helped convince Tom Haynes to let the guy go. But now, he's out to abate that, and then shoots it. But then lets the other guys go, so I guess he didn't learn anything. Like, the guy you let go went on to murder Tom Haynes. But then you let the other guys go. So again, the guy you let go who went on to murder someone, so you learn less to kill him, but then you let the three, four other guys go. So they're probably going to kill probably ten more people, thanks to your sorry ass, you stupid fuck. God, I hated this character. When so many other characters, I would like Barry Pepper, his character show lived. He did some cool moments. Like he shoots a sniper right through the fucking eyeball. That was cool. Uh, Tom Haynes could have, I mean, this is just my own personal preference. Tom Haynes, at least Tom Haynes and Barry Pepper, at least let those two characters live. And kill off the, the other Jeremy, that fucking idiot. Coward, chicken shit, pussy. But with that ranting all the way, there are some really nice bits of acting from Tom Hanks. Uh, Tom Sizemore does a really good job in this. Like I said, I really liked Barry Pepper and his sniper character. Ted Danson. I didn't even, I just remember Ted Danson's in this movie. Because the, the team, as they're trying to find Ryan, and they find the wrong Ryan, Nathan Fillion, they're with uh, Paul Giamatti, and then one thing leads to another, they're in a stand-up with a bunch of these Ger Nazis, the, or Germans, yeah, Nazis. And then this other platoon, with Ted Danson, shoots the, the bad guys. I'm like, that's fucking Ted Danson. I, did, I didn't remember he was in this movie. I think that's actually, after that, that's when they find the Ron Ryan, played by Nathan Fillion. I like the bit when they're looking through the dog tags, and... You know, they're just think of it as they are dog tags. But the Giovanni Rabizi reminds them, you got the whole fucking airborne watching. And some of their fallen represents those dog tags. So it was, I thought that was a nice sort of wake up call. You know, you're drowsy, you get the coffee, you get woken up. It's a nice wake up situation. Like, oh shit. Yeah. The action scenes are handled well. Very uh, bloody film. People get blown up to bits. I have a feeling Stallone saw this when he did Ramble 4. Maybe he probably was inspired by this movie when he did Ramble 4. Especially the ending to that. Um, they try to stop these guys. Giovanni Rabisi gets killed earlier in... Tom, uh, Vin Diesel gets killed very early in the movie. I forgot that, which is too bad. And then they have this big battle at the end because Bad Damon's not going to leave and they want to secure this bridge. And action happens. A good chunk of people get killed except Edward Burns and is the guy's name Jeremy Davies? What was the character's name? Sorry, one second. This fucking twerp of a character. Timothy Upham. Yeah, up yours, Upham. Up yours with a fucking garden tool. With Up yours with a tweezer. Fucking hate that character. And that's one of the only characters that gets to live. Matt Damon's Ryan. Edward Burns, who I like. I like Edward Burns. I... I He's one of the reasons I can watch A Sound of Thunder as unfinished as that movie is. <laughs> and I don't love the film, but as a time waster, I can watch it for certain things, including Edward Burns. I, I don't mind Edward Burns. He's in this film I need to give another watch called 15 Minutes. I remember not liking it because of what happens to Robert De Niro, but character in that movie, but... I do remember not minding Edward Burns. I think he was an Alex Cross. 
I actually remember liking that film. I know it's Tyler Perry, but and there's some bad editing, bad uh, shaky cam. I'll admit that that's the worst part of the movie. But I did remember liking Alice Cross for what it is. But yeah, I mean, other than the fact that that whole so many people die just to save one person. When they do that in certain movies, it's like, uh, I guess that shows where my frame of mind is at. But this movie does address that multiple times. It's not like it's ignoring that fact. So I do appreciate that. And that's getting the big basis of the movie. So I think that's a good thing that they don't just ignore it. Or it's like, that, that means nothing. No, that, that's a big part of it. I mean, the fucking title of the movie. The... I hate the the Jeremy Davies character. It's a bit long. I mean, I don't know if he needed to be three hours long. I mean, it's two hours and like 40-some minutes. There's certain parts that could be cut out. I mean... It's interesting that they found the wrong Ryan. Because, hey, they look at Nathan Fillion and Ted Danson. Do you really need all this? Not really. The whole bit where they got to take over this place and that's where Giovanni Rabisi's character gets killed. That scene in particular, you could have taken out really the only... Giovanni Rabisi gets killed, which you could have put that somewhere else. And... Like the ending or whatever. But mainly they, they let the soldier go. The German soldier. And then he's the one that kills Tom Hanks later. It's an irony. But that that whole bit. That whole thing could have easily been taken out. I don't know. I just. It's a bit over long. I don't rewatch this film a lot. But even to be fair, at the end of the day, it is a good movie because it's got a good cast who do their jobs well. The action scenes are handled well. Many people who were there say that this is a, especially at the beginning, a realistic depiction of the Battle of Normandy, that they got a lot of stuff right and those guys would know best. Competent cast. Well directed by Steven Spielberg. The score, I believe, is John Williams. Not too shabby of a score. Not one of my favorite John Williams scores, but not a bad score at all. Tom Haynes did do a wonderful job. I like Tom Haynes. I've heard that he's getting better. I'm glad because I think he's a really good actor. And he says he seems like a really nice guy too. I said I really liked Barry Pepper's sniper character. I liked Tom Sizemore. I liked Edward Burns. Uh, I liked a lot of the the characters, except the the ones who lived. I mean, I liked Edward Burns, but Ryan, you don't really know much about him other than his brothers died. And because we see him so late in the movie, it's kind of hard to, to care too much about the character. I like the actor, Matt Damon, but it's hard to care about the character, at least to me. When it's like the people I've been watching throughout it, they're the ones dying. I'm like, no, fuck Ryan. You guys live. And then the one guy I wanted to die the most, the twat, up him, up yours, up Dyke. Where the fuck? He's the one who lives. I'm like, fuck that. I did like the more Tom Means. That character was a badass because even though it'd be ineffective, he's still shooting that pistol with a tank come towards him. Granted, it's not going to do shit, but he's like, fuck it. So that's pretty badass. It's like, this ain't going to do shit, but fuck you guys. I'm still going to shoot at you. <laughs> fuck you, tank. So that was pretty cool. So overall, I do think it's a good movie. I honestly do prefer the thin red line over this. I prefer Casualties of War, Hammer Hill. 
I would say Platoon I like more than this. Apocalypse Now I haven't seen in decades, so I couldn't tell you that. Same with the... Uh, I haven't seen The Deer Hunter all the way through, so I couldn't tell you that. But yeah, I would definitely put Full Metal... I would say like my favorite war films would be stuff like Hammer to Hill, Full Metal Jacket, Couch Duties of War... Uh, I remember not minding we were soldiers. Now I'm just thinking of other war films. Her Locker, I remember liking. I'm not a fan of Lone Survivor. I'm sorry. Could not. I didn't like Lone Survivor at all, to be honest. And uh, God, I'm trying to think of other ones. I'm sure there's a bunch of others, but anyway. That's my thoughts on Saving Private Ryan. Good flick. I don't love the film, but it's a good flick. Either way, thanks for watching. Take care. And we will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.